Riley's dropped six kilos over the off season, so he's a he's got put a le put in a lot of work. He's an elite runner, and um, yeah, we're expecting to see him play some senior footy this year. That's for sure. He yeah, really refined his physique and added some power over that off season. So second quarter of this scratch match, 30 minute flat quarters, with Vadiz holding a five point lead. Great to have you with us wherever you're watching the stream from the deep southeast of Melbourne. It'll be Gorn and then Curvis again. Bounce wasn't recalled. Ross in the middle though. Hunt streaming off half back up towards half forward. Broad with a fist over the top. Jordan got the hand pass out for Melbourne. Vlostone, that was strong. He had an excellent first quarter, Nick Vlostone. Edwards looking for Chole. Used his body well. Pushed his opponent in the side and then has got support from Castagna behind. He goes inside 50. The captain, Cochin, drifting forward, hoping for a contested mark. It's knocked out of bounds. Melbourne with a five-point advantage. Early stages of this second quarter. Chole will do the ruck work this time against Gorn. Quite grab it cleanly with the left miss. This time he does though with the right boot. Chole goes high towards goal and out of bounds on the full. Don't often see Mabs kick on the, the right foot too much. That might have been the first time actually. <laughs> and uh, hopefully you don't have to see it again after that. <laughs> <laughs> might be the last. <laughs> I suppose the question came with, with the Tigers heading in and you'll hear a lot of this externally. Is the hunger level to go back to back to back four times in five years. It's might, it's might, more, might be more of a case of are other teams hungrier than you guys? Geelong, Brisbane, Port Adelaide, some of the contenders, the Demons. Yeah, you, you make a valid point. And it's probably this time of year where you um, you realise what a, what a marathon and, and how difficult it is, not yeah. even to uh, to win a grand final, but to be able to compete late in the season. And, um, you know, if, if, if you're not growing, if you're not improving, teams will, will pass you. And, um, you know, there, there's pressure with that. But... The great thing about our football club is uh, we're so process driven and the boys just love the process of, of getting better, better and improving and um, you know it's a, it's a healthy mindset and um, you know what, what happens later down the track is, is a long way away. There's um, a, a lot for us to, to improve on and get better at. Where can you see yourself or the team improving overall? Well, I think where our greatest growth is going to come from is players like Jack Rame and uh, Shea Bolton, Noel Bolter. Jaden Short, these players are, are premiership players, but they probably haven't had the responsibility with the likes of um, Dusty doing Dusty things and yeah. Koch. So, you know, I think we're going to see these players take a lot more accountability and responsibility in, in their game grow. And then you sprinkle players like Riley Collier Dawkins and Jack Ross around that. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of competition for spots in our football club and, and, and a lot of growth from that, that group of players. Someone like Jack Ross, obviously, he's been on the scene for a few years now, hasn't been able to really cement his spot. I guess that competition is healthy. Is he someone that you can see breaking into this midfield? Yeah, of course. He's had a fantastic pre-season. You know, obviously, these boys missed a lot of footy last year with um, the way the season panned out. And it's, you know, it's important that they get opportunities because we don't want them to feel like they're not capable. Uh, you know, just the opportunities have been really difficult to come by. Oh, Kotcher with a big fly over the top, getting himself involved in the contest early. The captain in the pre-season for the Brownlow medalist, three-time premiership skipper. Flying high. No score yet in this second quarter. Great to have three-time Richmond premiership player Kane Lambert joining us in the commentary box as Edwards crumbed it off the pack. Couldn't quite gather cleanly. He had some space in front of him. Petrarca makes it somebody else's problem. Ralph Smith underneath. Bob picked up there by McDonald, but gave it straight to Cochin. Nice composure from the captain towards Ross, then Curvis, to Ralph Smith, to Dustin Martin. So strong through the core, Dusty. Ralph Smith to McIntosh, towards the top of the goal square. Castagna going back, but couldn't quite find the goals. So Richmond 2 4 16, Melbourne 3 2 20. Good to see Hugo Ralph Smith linking up a bit there. Pick 46 back in the 2019 draft. His father, Sean, actually played 34 games of footy for Hawthorne and St Kilda. How do you see Hugo Ralph Smith locking into this side? Yeah, I've seen his uh, development progress really nicely over the last 12 months, particularly. I think he's a bit of a raw talent as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, he's got speed, he's got composure, and, uh, you know, he's nice by foot. So I can see him slotting into a halfback line uh, at some stage. Oh, 
dangerous kick from Gorn. Cochin thumped it forward. He's had a few important touches this quarter. Bolton looking for the free kick. Salem handballs it out. Graham just gets boot to ball. Salem there was trying to block that forward foray. May to harms. Important handball there from the key defender, but one finds the boundary line out of bounds on the full. Just on Hugo Ralph Smith, Damien Hardwick in an interview with AFL.com said uh, Ralph Smith had a bigger body and a bigger mullet. You notice that as well? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. He, um, well, I think up in the hub, the boys had a little bit of extra time in the gym and, and I think it was less about their performance, more about their physique. But um, <laughs> sometimes it, uh, it's beneficial. But um, no, he, he's had a great pre-season. Here's Castagna. Beautiful crumb off the pack. And on the left, Castagna kicks Richmond third. He had the, the 17 goals last year from the 21 games. Castagna and he's got Richmond's third goal here today. He got a few options up in that small forward position. Jake Arts as well, along with Castagna. And, you know, Bolton played a lot through the middle last year, but it has shown that he's, he's gone forward. So getting some some of those crummers around the, the feet of Revolt and Lynch will be really important. Yeah, it is. And, and those boys are fantastic at, at creating contests and bringing the ball to the ground. Uh, Daniel Rowley's been another one of those who's not playing today. You know, Jake Arts had a fantastic year last year. It was very unfortunate to, to miss out. I think it was the uh, the first final he, he made his way out. So, you know, again, it's so competitive spots. And, um, you know, that, that, that's a real key to our, uh, our structure and the way we play the game is our small forwards. So it looks like Luke Jackson's going to have a run in the ruck here for the Ds. You go up against Nan Curvis. Jackson leaping high with the big left fist of Nan Curvis wins out. Dustin Martin. Castagna on the half volley. Keeps it in front of himself and he keeps his feet. In the corner. It's a free kick afterwards. Castagna was dealt with after he disposed of the ball. So it'll be a downfield free kick. Jack Graham be the recipient. Go with a different haircut, Kane, for the, uh, the 2021, start of 2021? Yeah, it's getting a little bit harsher. There's a few too many mullets yeah. going around at our footy club, but um, I think that was a bit of a birthday special for Jack Ryan right. yesterday. He goes high inside 50. May looking for the intercept mark. Couldn't quite grab it cleanly. He's still a very... So it was his birthday yesterday, but he's still... Very young player as well. Yeah, very young, but he plays like a you know, 100, 200 gamer, and um, you know he's got a he's got a lot of leadership qualities in him. And um, again, I think he I think he'll go to another level this year. That was a great handball out from Lever. Found Hunt, but he finds the boundary line on the full. Tigers with a fair bit of field position so far in this second term. You see Petrarca resting at full forward, Max Gorn in the forward half as well. So a big opportunity for some of these young midfielders for the Ds to go head to head with the likes of Cochin and Dustin Martin. Short. Goes long. Inside 50. Lynch in front. Oh, look at Edwards streaming off the back. Textbook front and centre goal from Shane Edwards and Richmond with the first two goals of this quarter. Still got plenty of speed, Shedder. He does, he does. I don't think he's um, ageing at all. He's probably feeling better than what he has in a long time. And obviously, he's another one who missed the, uh, a lot of the footy last year. So he's, um, I'm sure he'd be really keen to, to launch into this season. So Richmond's fourth goal of the quarter. Some good signing news. Ben Gibson mentioned at the top of the, uh, in the first quarter that a couple of really important re-signings during the week of Dion Prestia and, and Dylan Grimes, uh, Kane. Yeah, real key 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 pillars to our footy club and, and great people with that as well. So, um, you know, Dion, again, he was another one who probably had a little difficult year last year and, um, you know, Grimes, you all know what he's capable of. This is the way he's been able to perform with. Without Rancy there, he's really taken, um, you know, such a leadership role, not only just down back, but around the whole footy club. So, um, yeah, he's very good at what he does and we're excited about both of them staying around the club. Going back in the ruck. Palming it towards Harms. Richmond have certainly had the territory dominance in this quarter. Nine minutes played so far. Free kick, though, going the way of Oliver. He goes into the arc. And there is Grimes on cue. Trademark intercepting from Dylan Grimes. Edwards just kicked the goal moments ago. Through the middle of Casey. He's got Will Martin short. Just through his fingertips. He's got three Ds around him, but good composure to get it to Bolton. Caddy, 70 metres out from goal. 
Dees have flooded back, but the Tigers moved the ball inside 50, but again, Lever in the hole, chopping it off before it got to Revolt. No easy targets, though, for the Dees. Oh, McDonald presents one, and then a great crumb from Fritsch off the pack. Sweeps it to Sparrow. He's got Bolter on the other side, but well done. Get it off to Langdon. That's great run from the Dees. And on the left, he's hit Petrarca. Kick along the ground. Didn't do his teammates any favours, though. Asprey for Richmond. Short. Didn't quite get a kick off or a handball away. So free kick to Fritsch. Edge of the 50. Looks for a target inside 15 again. Nathan Jones popping up with a mark inside. Saw him take a, a mark and convert his set shot in the first quarter. Now they have about 40 metres to cover on this occasion. He's a good kick, Nathan Jones. He's going to have to reinvent himself a little bit as a player in the back end of his career. Obviously, a gun midfielder for the, the first 250-odd games of his career. But, um, yeah, if he can convert these opportunities, then he'll be able to provide some value to this Melbourne side. Going for goal number two in the fluoro green boots. Well off to the right. Might stay in play, but Vlostone easily able to take the mark. This, this back line of, of yours, Kane, at down back with Vlostone and Asprey and, and Grimes. Such a reliable back line. Then you add in Liam Baker, who in the first quarter showed some really good signs, streaming off half back as well. It's... Such a solid defensive six that you can, or defensive seven that you can rely on. Yeah, it is, and they, they all complement each other really, really well. And uh, yeah, they they're a tight bond. The um, the backs, they're a little bit of a team within a team, and uh, they're extremely competitive uh, bunch. So it's um, exciting to see when they go against our forwards at training. Someone who's not in that side at the moment is Ryan Garthwaite. He's a pretty versatile player, can play tall defence, tall forward, uh, a popular player among the group. Uh, how does he fit into this side? Yeah, he's, he's a popular member around our footy club and he's a great guy, great trainer. Um, does absolutely everything he can to be able to perform. We might actually see a little bit of him down forward this year. I think they'll okay. get a little bit innovative with, with where they see him. Um, hopefully he can come in and play a role at either end of the ground. From memory, watching... Oh, it's a Great mark there from Stephen May. From memory, watching Garthwaite in the under-18 championships a few years, he's a terrific contested mark. He is, and he's, he's hard as nails as well. Um, he, um, you know, sometimes he's probably his harshest critic, but it's all because he just wants to improve and get better. So, um, yeah, I think we'll see, see Garthwaite at some stage. Caddy sweeps the handball over the top to Vlostone. Tigers move the ball forward, and Will Martin going back with a flight. And a free kick off the ball, so Martin will be the recipient here. It's been busy early. Will Very Martin, busy. Lions Academy player. Yeah, the Tigers poached, poached one there as Revolt came from three deep and in front. Castagna beat everyone to it. Nice mark from Castagna in front. It's a couple of bigger bodies coming pretty hard behind him. Really good mark. He had Lever and Revolt and Chole sort of in, in that vicinity, but the small forward was up to the task. 35 metres to cover. Covers it easily. Hits the woodwork. There's a couple of other players not playing today. Kane besides himself. So Presti's got the hamstring and Bashar Hooli's uh, got, got the calf as well. Hopefully we get to see them are pretty close to round one, but obviously they won't be rushed. Yeah, that's right. There's a cautious approach for both of them. Um, you know, hopefully it's uh, building towards round one, but uh, as we said, it's a, it's a marathon this footy season and it's more important that we get them healthy and fit and right, and whether that's round one or a little bit later, we'll just wait and see. Does it, and did that really hit home, the marathon, not a sprint sentiment last year in particular with Edwards and Hawley missing? so much footy, yet you were still able to get yourselves in a great position and peak at the right time of the year. Yeah, it's probably been the narrative of, um, you know, the last last two or three years with us. It's, um, you know, it's it's important for us to build as the year goes on. And, um, you know, we, we want to be playing our best footy at the, the right time of the year. And, yep. you know, that's not to undermine how important it is early in the year. But, um, you know, a fit and healthy list goes a long way to be able to... Uh, perform well when it, when it counts. Great transition there from the Demons. Going through the corridor, good to see James Jordan involved. And Jaden Hunt running off half-back. Spent some time forward last year. Can yep. hit the scoreboard, but goes in and out of games a little bit 
inside 50, so good to see him hit up Tom McDonald there. McDonald, Melbourne's first decent scoring opportunity of the quarter, and it's into the, into the left upright. So you've watched a fair bit of Melbourne training, Benny G. Uh, Hunt, as you said, played forward. We seem to be a little bit streaming off half-back. Is, can we expect him a little bit more, do you reckon, off him off half-back this yeah, year? Yeah, I, th I think they'd like to add his pace and flair off half-back. It, it sort of changes the dynamic for the Demons. Um, yeah, his foot skills are probably the one thing that let him down at times, but, um, yeah, he's certainly got some pace and he's hard to catch. So it'll be tossed back in 70 metres out, 60 metres out from the Melbourne goal. Tigers with two goals in this quarter to Edwards and Castagna. Jackson, nice tap in front down to Harms. Jordan had the ball stripped away. Edwards got it off. Will Martin again with another touch. Revolt sweeping it all the way out. Perfectly executed handball to Edwards, to Castagna. Inside 50, Lynch in front of Lever. Good pressure, though, from Lever. Stripped, though, there. Arts. Centers it to Caddy's in position A, had the sit and has the mark as well. So Caddy will on the right side for a right footy here. To try and bend it around. Baker on the mark for Melbourne. Got a really good look at it here on your screens. And executes it perfectly. Lovely shot from Josh Caddy. Someone who Missed out last year on, on that premiership and certainly has a, a point to prove this year. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, Cads is a quality footballer. We know that he can perform in uh, in big moments. He's probably had a little bit of a change in the way uh, we, we want him to play. He spent a lot of time on the wing, which is pretty foreign from him probably up until the last couple of years. But the thing about Cads is he's, he's open, to, uh, open to ideas and, you know, you give him a role and he'll execute it. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to, to having him a part of... Uh, potentially uh, a more consistent uh, basis this year. So, um, as I said, it's, it's an extremely competitive footy club and, you know, people like Josh Caddy missing out, you know, you're going yeah. okay. I saw something similar the year before. Camden McIntosh, who's just run out onto the wing there, he missed out on uh, a premiership in 2019. I know he worked really hard in that 2020 pre-season, went over to Utah, did a bit of running there uh, and then ended up coming top five in the BNF and, and wins his flag in 2020. So a great story and something we could see from Caddy with that hard work. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and probably a real unheralded uh, role in, in football, the wing sometimes. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was so proud of Camden to be able to, to wake his way back and, and, and be a part of a premiership last year. That was one of the most remarkable things about your 2020 campaign was when you look at your best and fairest top five and Jaden Short takes it out and McIntosh is right up there and Baker is right up there as well. It was some of the guys that don't, you know, aren't in the, the spotlight probably as much or don't get the, the headlines as, as much. They were such key members of your 2020 campaign. Yeah, they are. And, you know, they're so important to the way we play. And, you know, sometimes your value is not actually um, written on a statistics sheet. It's more yeah. about what you do without the ball. And, you know, we, without players like that, you know, the Dustin Martins and these type of players can't do what they do. So uh, it was so good to see them get rewarded for that. I think one of the important things last year on that is being a team, obviously, up in the hub. Uh, how did you find that experience? It's been a bit of a talking point, but obviously the team that was going to deal with it the best was going to come out on top, and the Tigers did that. Yeah, of course. And, you know, on a personal level, I, I loved it. I really enjoyed it. I understand that my life situation is different to other people, but, um, you know, being able to spend a lot of time with uh, the group and, and something that's so important to us was was a great experience. And, um, you know, they, they looked after extremely well up there. Um, so, yeah, I, I loved every minute of it, to be honest. So Neil Bullen got the free kick, but his uh, kick was just off to the right and thumped through from minor. So 13-point lead now for Richmond as Vlostone, the high kick, and then McIntosh sitting right underneath that. That was a great kick from Vlostone, right to McIntosh's advantage. They're streaming forward here, the Tigers. Bolton will fly from the side, as will Lever. At ground level, Spargo just overran it. Ross again, but he gave it up to Lever. Touch off the boot so that won't be a mark to Baker. He knew the, the call as well. And then picked it up at ground level. It was dealt with afterwards. There was a push. It must have come from uh, Hunt. Langdon, rather. Looked very similar in the long sleeves and the, uh, and the hair, those two. So Baker will take it right in front of the scoreboard at Casey. He goes back to Grimes. Asprey. Lost 
Working their way across half back to the Tigers. Grimes into the centre square. Pulls the trigger through the middle. Chole and Lynch are there. Chole had good hands on that. Rivers at ground level going straight to Graham, to Bolton. Exciting build up here for the Tigers. Edwards gets it back. Graham, high. Revolt v Lever. Gorn in the hole, and the Melbourne skipper takes the mark. Nicely played by Gorn. Dangerous kick, though, but Spargo was up to the task and able to take it cleanly. So a couple of other sort of younger Tigers that we probably haven't mentioned yet that I know Tiger fans are certainly keen to see a bit more of in the, in the short-term future is Thompson Dow, who was kind of the, the buzz coming out of uh, last Saturday's intra-club game as well. Uh, Paddy Nash got a little bit of senior experience as well. How have you sort of seen those two uh, players this pre-season? Yeah, for sure. You make a good point. There are probably a couple of boys who you add into the category of uh, Jack Ross and, and Riley as well. You know, Thompson's been a... Um, a real quality addition to our footy club since he's got in the door. And, and Nashi brings a different element. He's, uh, he's a, a very energetic uh, type of character as such, but, you know, both quality players. So, um, you know, they, the way they will be able to hold themselves in the hub as young guys who probably didn't get much opportunity, but to still show up and perform, they are vital to the way we prepared each week. The Tigers intercept the ball. Cochin streaming along the wing. Beautifully weighted kick for Castagna. He just was able to turn Baker at the right time as well. Inside 50, Arts has to sit. Chole from the side. Nice grab. And he's assessing his options now. A lot of red and blue back. Revolt and Lynch were there. Gorn again. Dropping back in the hole. Just back to Paddy Nay. She's the kind of guy to a local footy club would be doing the, the fine system. Would that be fair to say? Is that, is that kind of personality? Yeah, yeah, he, he's all about that. But the problem with Paddy is he'll be the one getting most of the fines. So <laughs> he, um, <laughs> no, he's a great character. Football, football clubs need people like him. Might see a little bit of him a bit later today as Graham gets the hand pass off to Asprey. Arts, lovely slips catch. But the D's are, again... Nicely positioned back. You can see Max Gorn streaming back in front of Tom Lynch. Making it very hard to get a clean mark. That kick just had a bit too much juice on it to Caddy. Lever got rid of it incorrectly, but before that he was tackled high. So he's been a standout player for the D's so far in this game. Jones streaming off half back, but again, the Richmond wall is set up and they're getting that territory dominance. Asprey, Bolter, Baker is providing an option on the wing, McIntosh again finds some space, they've opened up the fat side here, they look for another way in, Lynch is in front and he takes the mark, good reward for effort there Kane, they've, the Tigers have really been patient across half back and amongst sort of the flood of demons they've finally been able to find a way through. Yeah, it looks like we're setting up pretty well behind the ball. Uh, just a little bit of composure going inside forward 50, but uh, you expect that at this time of year. It's um, you know it's it's nice to be playing footy again and, and plenty of work on. Directly in front, you should have no issues here. Lynch, goal number six for Richmond. They've had an excellent quarter. That's their fourth goal of the quarter, and they now lead by 19 points. It's another year, another opportunity for Lynch and Revolt to. To work together it's a it's a combination that some had some doubts over before lynch made the move from gold coast but they they've clicked so well and it's sort of a, a scary thought for opposition defenses they, they've got another pre-season under their belt to work on that chemistry yeah i agree and you know obviously lynch has come into the footy club and, and made a significant difference in a short amount of time and you know there, there's no doubt we, have, we wouldn't be able to do what we've been able to without someone like tom lynch and uh, you know, it goes well beyond what he can do on the footy field yep. as well. You know, he's a, he's a former captain of a football club and just a great all-round person. And, you know, sometimes I think there's a, a, a misconception about the person that gets portrayed. But, you know, for someone who's got to know him really well over the last 12 months, he's a, he's a quality human being. Tigers by 19. Then Curtis, Vic Gorn, Petrarca been a little quiet this term, but they get the clearance here. Sparrow's kick was smothered. The pressure from Richmond undoubtedly is lifted. Jones inside 50. Fritsch flew. Jordan with the crumb. There's a free kick called. 
And it will be going back the way of the Tigers. They wanted a 50-metre penalty, but none forthcoming. Broad to be the recipient. Yeah, going against Fridge there. A bit clumsy in the air. Five and a half minutes to go in this second term, if you're just joining us. We've got four half-an-hour quarters in game one, and then we're going to have three thirds, if you like. 30-minute thirds in game two. We've just seen Richmond's B team go out to another ground at Casey Fields for a little warm-up. Yeah, challenging, challenging our fractions, no doubt about that. Seven <laughs> quarters today as Harms goes short. Is Hunt Salem? So now the D's using short kicks and possession to work their way inside 50. Jackson in front. Asprey juggled the mark, wasn't, well, wasn't paid the mark. And then the D's would be pretty happy to have a forward 50 stoppage here. Just great body use there by Bolter on Jackson just to nudge him under the ball and let Asprey come across and help. Bolter obviously had a massive season, but grand final is the only non-premiership player prior to that 2020 grand final and played a massive role ending up in the ruck. Yeah, he did. He played a significant role. And, uh, you know, we've seen his growth. He's got a, um, he's got a lot of talent, that kid. He's just got to be able to um, just develop a little bit over time. And, and people like David Asprey and, and Dylan Grimes, Nick Lawson around him, enables him to flourish and um, for him it's about just getting the basics right and, and doing what he does really well so you know and, and, and like I mentioned earlier that's a really exciting thing about our football club because there's players like Noel Bolter who have the experience of playing deep in finals footy but have so much more growth in their game so um, you know he's an exciting talent. So Chandler has taken the mark inside 50. We heard Sammy Wiedemann in the first quarter talking about how he'd been one of the most impressive pre-season trainers. On the left he's Squeezed it back nicely, and the D's have their first goal of the quarter. Kay Chandler, who, as Ben Gibson mentioned, broke his hand three times last uh, last year. Last year, last due, year. due for some luck, uh, Kay Chandler. Had, took 40 seconds off his personal best in the time trial He did. As well. Yeah, Berger gave him a program for the off-season. He went away. Back to South Australia, put in a lot of work, and yeah, he's come back in great shape. He debuted in 2019, round 22 against the Swans. Unfortunately, hurt his wrist in that game and hasn't been seen again at AFL level, but yeah, deserves another shot. He's got a good left foot on him. So as you can see, beautiful execution from Chandler, the left footer from South Australia. 41 to 28. We've just got over three minutes remaining in this second quarter. Jackson again doing the ruck work. Oliver. Dustin Martin. Clever toe poke to Bolton. Slips the tackle. Spears it towards Rebot in the half volley. Clean pick up from the veteran. Trying to find Ross, who may have been held without it. Lever applies the tackle on Caddy. Harms. Now Oliver. Good run from Harms here from halfback. Tried the don't argue and got Baker a bit high. Oh, Baker got Harms a bit high. Could have gone either way. Chandler. Back to Harms. A couple of possession chains here for Harms, but he ran out of mates. Goes back again, puts his head over the footy. Ross clean to Broad. Sweeps it further afield. A couple of Ds in the hole. Lever. Petrarca. Nicely played. Chandler. Full stretch. Again, the Ds looking to use the corridor. That attacking mindset that Sam Wiedemann told us about. Now, Salem switches it all the way out to May. Rivers, May again, streaming through the middle of Casey, spearing it to Fritsch. Good ball movement from the D's. He'll have about 55 metres to cover, but he's a beautiful left foot kick as well. Bailey Fritsch, he's already got one goal today for Melbourne. Yeah, and no stranger to these conditions. He was drafted from the Casey Demons. He's a cold stream boy. Um, very impressive kick of the footy. Keeps it low, right towards the top of the goal square. And it's a mark there, and the captain standing in tall in the, in the goal square, able to take a strong contested mark. Plucked it from a number of hands. That's a nice confidence booster for Max Gorn, who will go back and kick this goal for the Demons. I suppose just before, as we kick, oh, tick down towards halftime, and Gorn puts it through, Kane. Are you excited for, for 2021? Describe your excitement levels ahead of this season. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there was, it was just exciting to be back at the footy club and, and train at what uh, a somewhat normal sort of training program. Yeah. So, uh, you know, probably the year we had last year was a, a great reminder of how grateful we need to be for, for the small things around uh, being involved in footy clubs. So, you know, it's exciting to, uh, on the eve of 
a new season and potentially having crowds and playing at the MCG again. Um, but, yeah, it's just nice to be able to, to play footy again. Yeah. In previous years, you're probably used to everything being quite perfect. You've got your schedule and uh, you train certain times of the week. From last year, you've learnt that that's not possible anymore. Do you, I guess do you now sort of just take everything as it comes and you're happy to be flexible and just grateful when you do get the opportunity? Yeah, I think so. I think we have to be. You have to be flexible and adaptable and, uh, you know, take things as they come. Uh, but that, that's just the way it is now, I'm assuming, with, uh, with the way the, the world is at the moment. Yep. But, um, you know, just to be playing football amongst a, um, a, what's been a pretty tough uh, couple of years. So that brings us to half-time here at Casey Fields. The Tigers started at